Good morning folks, welcome Mark Duty here again and today we're going to review Resident Evil um, Welcome to Raccoon City Boy is this film a mess Okay, so non-spoilers at first, so let's do this So, hmm so basically the premise of the film is basically the first and second game meshed together to create something. That's all I can say because literally it's the film starts off really slow. And then by the time you get halfway through, it it's pretty much rushed and over. Which is kind of like <sighs> Do you know what, if they had the budget that the original Resident Evil movies had, this would have been a brilliant film if it had better writers. And they broke the film down, that they didn't rush it into the first game and the second game. So it basically takes place in the mansion, but the mansion's like 10, 15 minutes of the film. And it's literally rushed through and the Raccoon City Police Department, and that is literally rushed again and it's like why who knows I, I don't really understand what they was trying to achieve here let's talk about characters this is a big one uh, they basically cut the balls off Leon they've completely ruined his character I mean the characters that they've placed in to be the main characters it, it's bad really bad it's, it's just no good at all um, Jill Valentine, you, you're like, what's happening here? What's going on? Leon is completely, absolutely cut his nuts off. They've made him a buffoon in this, an, an absolute idiot. He basically uh, he gets, wakes up, starts drinking, he's constantly asleep, he's constantly useless. He can't even work a shotgun or anything like that, and it's like, why? why and his character is pretty pointless he's just there to fill a space basically until like the last five ten minutes and then he becomes useful for but does something ridiculous um now claire redfield they they've whammoned her up basically to be like this super duper brilliant she does everything she's like the main character that does absolutely everything and she's fantastic and it's like nah really she isn't it's just like what's going on here you know what i mean so i mean this film is just oh it goes downhill very very fast so let's get into the spoilers right okay so you remember the iconic scene at the beginning of Resident Evil 2 where um, Leon and Claire, that like running through the street, shooting zombies, the tanker comes in and explodes. Well, this is in this film, but it's ridiculous how they've done it. You know what I mean? It, there's no payoff. They're meant to get split up. So Claire and Leon split up and they're meant to get to Raccoon City Police Department. That doesn't happen on this. What happens is, is basically Claire gets in the car with the truck driver and they basically hit this woman who's a zombie, if you can call it that. Because in this it's really weird. Because the people are going crazy because Raccoon City have polluted the water and made everybody go crazy. So you ever watch the crazies, it's basically like that at first and then they turn into zombies. It's really weird and you can't tell what speed they're meant to be whether they're like Romero slow walking zombies or they're meant to be fast zombies because there's times where they're like the zombies are like leaping and they're like running and it's like well no the Resident Evil zombies don't do this you know what I mean so it's really it's all over the shop with the the actual zombies themselves the liquor oh that it's, it's got a mushroom head it doesn't even look right you look at it you think well, that's meant to be a liquor that doesn't seem right to me um again it's it, the film's all over the place the pacing on this is ridiculous because it starts off really slow I'm halfway into the film i kept on checking the time i'm like when's something gonna happen what's what's going on here you know what i mean and basically they brought in like you know the vickers the helicopter um, pilot he was in it you know what i mean wesker the only character i actually liked was wesker you know what i mean it didn't look like wesker none of the characters look like who they're supposed to be 
but Wesker to me was actually a decent enough character that they've tried to portray a decent kind of story arc for. That was the only person with any decent story arc. Jill Valentine was in love with Wesker for some reason, I don't know why. And then basically she's like the bestest shot ever, you know. The whammy her up as well, and then basically running, you know, the, the mansion scene makes no bloody sense whatsoever. So basically, they're like, Oh, there's a report of a dead body, and they basically go and investigate. And basically, the Raccoon City itself has been emptied because apparently Umbrella have moved their headquarters to a different place, and the only people left in Raccoon City are the poor who can't afford to leave, and basically um, the remnant of the Umbrella Corporation. So it's like, okay, that doesn't really make sense, not much of it, uh, you know. Um, and we all know how, how, you know, how Resident Evil 2 ends. It ends with a nuclear strike, a tactical nuclear strike to blow up the city. Well, this doesn't happen on this. I'm not quite sure what happened basically the 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 mansion collapsed even though there's a big underground lab underneath it but that that isn't happening in this one for some reason it's just a mansion and then it just collapses and then that's it everything's destroyed the only be decent bit that leon had was right at the end where um you had chris and claire fighting um william birkin and then basically <laughs> Which is, and they, he dies too easy. Let's pull it this way: he dies way too easy, and basically Leon comes out with a rocket launcher and shoots it right next to when Chris and Claire are fighting it, and they're right next to him, and basically would have killed him. He comes out with a an, an AT launcher, just like phew, dead, and it's like okay, so they escape on the train. You know what I mean? So th there are bits in this film. They bring the hunks into it. You see a hunk for about two minutes. If that is just standing there saying, we secured Raccoon City, no one's getting out. And that's basically it. So it's like, okay. So they put hunk in it, but they just wasted the character. There was no explanation. Um, it's like the explanation of the T and the G virus. Basically, that's rushed as well. Basically... The one scientist that's been locked up in the prison turns around and says, Oh, you know about the T and the G virus to Leon? And Leon's like, No, I don't know, not me. You know what I mean? And then basically he ends up getting bitten and dead. So that's your quick explanation as to the T and the G virus. There isn't one. They just mention it very, very quickly and that's it. Um, again, just like, why? What's the point in that? Who knows? The budget on this is absolutely terrible, but the zombies They actually I thought they actually looked really good. I Was expecting a lot worse because I seen the trailers and I thought oh, this this is gonna be absolutely crap You know, what I mean, I mean it was crap. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's a terrible film the, the idea was there But it, it doesn't pay off at all the budget was way too small for a film like this and basically they needed to decide on whether they wanted to do the first game or the second game if they made one film just the mansion and then explored the mansion and did all that that would have been absolutely fine but they didn't they just basically they merged the first and second one together and basically it was like it's 10 o'clock it's 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 20 past 12. It's now 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. If they got rid of all that, because basically Wesker gets a message saying at 6 a.m. the city's going to be destroyed. But you didn't actually see the city get destroyed. You just seen the mansion collapse. So that kind of didn't really pay off at all. That didn't work. Um, I liked how they put, like, they did it in 1998 and they put, like, the retro music from 98 and it actually felt like it was in 98. No mobile phones or anything, no easy way through the police station itself was weird because like the police chief was like says to leon lock the gates there will be more coming because the right so get this yeah so the petrol tanker 
basically he starts turning into a zombie crashes it right outside the police station and explodes leon's asleep on the front desk with the doors open the gates open and he can see right out but he's asleep yeah and the tanker explodes right outside and he doesn't even flinch until a guy the the truck driver comes bolting into the into the police department on fire and it's like what so you're telling me a tanker exploded right outside the police station and leon didn't even notice it why what's the point in that so again it's like this is just awful the, the payoffs are just completely awful i thought oh they were gonna get this bit right you know what i mean but they didn't I mean, it's like Claire, Claire, right? So Claire goes to Chris's house. She eventually breaks in after seeing the weird family next door because for some reason eyes start bleeding and they're all turning crazy. But anyway, she breaks into his house, you know what I mean? And then Chris comes down and Chris is quiet. I thought, yeah, they're going to do Chris quite well on this because he was like, you know, what are you doing here, Claire? What are you doing? And there was kind of a family rift there. And it was like, there wasn't really much of a rift in... in in the game anyway so i don't know why they opted for that option so basically claire and chris fell out and they were trying to make them in like a a difficult position where they fell out with each other and chris birkin uh, sorry william birkin was trying to experiment on um the sister but he then looked after the brother like a father and paid again it doesn't make any sense as to why you would do that but you know I mean, in the end, it was basically they were trying to experiment on, on Claire and make her into some, I don't know, they were experimenting on children for some reason. It doesn't explain why, whether they were explaining that they were trying to do the T and the G virus and they were experimenting on orphan kids. Yet there seems to be a hell of a lot of orphan kids there for no apparent reason. So who knows as to why, you know what I mean? So, the, I mean, all in all, the film is a mess an absolute mess and it was just rushed i mean makes no sense why wouldn't leon i mean the excuse for leon being the rookie in the town was basically he shot his partner in the ass and basically his dad's like a rich they don't really explain what he was he was just a rich high up person in the police force and basically they got him they got him through academy and basically he got dumped in raccoon city for his uh, as a um, punishment in order to fix shooting someone in the ass but I don't know again it doesn't make sense Leon is just a useless sponge he's goofy stupid and it's like that's not the Leon from the games the Leon from the games he was he was he knew what he wanted he knew what he was doing he did everything by the book he was a very good police officer you know what I mean and then basically they just ruined him completely ruined him um, again, they put Sherry in it, and Sherry was Sherry Birkin, and she was pointless. I don't understand what was going on. Um, if you watch to the end credits, and you watch the last bit, basically, obviously, Wesker dies. <laughs> basically, William Birkin shoots him. Him and um, Thingy have a shootout, because basically, Wesker's gone in to get the T and the G virus, or the G virus because someone's paid him, he don't know who's paid him, someone's paid him to go and get it and they'll get him out safely. He doesn't know any details or anything like that, he only knows that basically the, the city's going to get blown up, which doesn't get blown up, and basically he has to go and get the G-Virus because someone's paying him a lot of money and he doesn't know who it is, he doesn't have any contact with the people that are doing it, and then basically he just gets messages to go and do so. So anyway, they have a shootout, Wesker dies, get shot and then well William Birkin shoots him and then basically he's there dying and then basically he goes to shoot the uh, sherry but he wasn't going to shoot her apparently and then basically Jill Valentine shoots him and kills him mm, you know and then basically again that doesn't make sense and then basically right at the end of the credits basically 
he wakes up in a body bag and he opens up the body bag and he's struggling to breathe. He's like, what's going on here? And then basically you have like the Asian woman standing over him, which we all know would be Ada Wong. And then he's like, what happened? She's like, I brought you back. There have been a few differences. You'll notice the few differences and they'll take effect soon. And basically he goes, what's your name? I don't know who you are. And she's like, I'm Ada Wong. And it's like, Ada Wong actually looks a good casting, but you only see her right at the end. And she just says, I'm Ada Wong we've made some changes to you passes him a pair of sunglasses he puts them on and he can see because for some reason he can't see puts the sunglasses on and then he can see again i don't know i don't know it's just a mess it's is it worth watching it's not worth spending your money on um i have my sources to watch it because obviously it's not a film i can get here and even if i did watch it here it would be cut because of all the, the blood and the gore and Indonesia, you can't watch them kind of things here. So everything's been cut. So I got it from their different source where I was able to watch it. If you know what I mean, army mateys. But anyway, what can I say about this film? It's just all over the place. There's no kind of understanding as to what the zombies are. They don't explain why why the virus got out. They don't explain that at all. It's just literally, they were like, oh, um, sirens started going off and Umbrella's like, you need to leave. And then basically everyone's like, oh no, what's going on? And then basically William's like, we need to get out of here to his family. And his family runs away and basically there's a whole lot of scenes. There's a lot of garbage. You're watching it and you're like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And they put this crazy... I don't know what it is. It reminds me of like wrong turn. You know the 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 hillbillies at a wrong turn, and basically there's like this woman in it. And there's I don't know. I, I think it's either I've forgotten about the games or something. But they called the Lucy, and she was like this little running around like, and you're like what? And then she like pulls the head off a of liquor and stuff like that, and you're like, I don't get this. I really don't get this. Who is this person? Why is the orphanage in this? What, what's going on? What, what's happening here? You know what I mean? They didn't even explain the stars either, that they were this, what is it, Special Tactics and Recon or something like that, or Special Tactics Assault. I don't know. I can't remember what stars stood for. But anyway, they didn't explain that, and they didn't explain why there's, like, all the Special Force cops there and, like, one rookie. Well, there was like, no, sorry, there was Leon as the rookie, the police chief, a couple of stars members, and another cop who you never saw again. He was just in the cafe, which again doesn't make sense. And it's like, okay, I'm sure there was more people in it, more people in Raccoon City, but you literally, you only saw about seven, eight people, if that. And that's basically it, you know what I mean? It's it's a weird film. It, do you know what? I would have liked this film if it was just the mansion at first, and then they did a second film for the, um, for the game. So they would uh, for the second game because it would have been absolutely brilliant. It would have been good. They actually kept the storyline they stuck to from the games was good, but the rest of it was garbage. And I think it's because of the writers. You know what I mean? You look at who directed this and who's wrote it, and you're thinking, yeah, this is bad. You know what I mean? You had a very easy script to work off. You had the games to work off. If you're basing it on the games, base it on the games. Don't They've done tweaks in the characterization. The characters are flawed, completely flawed. The only decent one, I think, is Wesker, in my opinion. But even he didn't look like Wesker. Um, Leon definitely doesn't look like Leon. Leon just looks like, you know, one of these hippies. And it was like, you know, they've just, they joke on him all the way through and they just absolutely lay into him for no reason. So again, Jill Valentine, she's in love with Wesker and basically she wants Wesker and Chris is in love with Jill Valentine. And basically it's like, that's really weird. It's a really weird story why they've done that. I don't understand as to what the purpose was. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's give it a duty rating. A duty rating. I mean, out of five being the best, one being the worst, I'm going to give this. This is a two. It's got to be a two. It has its good moments, but they've wasted a completely decent storyline. They've got nowhere with it. And basically, the idea was there. You can see that the idea was there, and it was going to be a good film. 
somewhere along the lines they must have just had a very heavy session and come out with this garbage because it was working to be a good film you know as soon as it's in the truck driver and everything and, and like people in certain roles you know certain characters certain things happening and thinking yeah they're keeping to the story and then it just went on and off on a tangent and it was like okay okay this, this went downhill extremely fast i'm in mean, the first half of the film it's kind of really slow and boring and you're like what's going on here why but anyway that's it two out of five is worth your time watching i mean if you love your resident evils it's worth to watch in the sense you know a bit of nostalgia you know what i mean but other than that it's not worth paying your money for watch it for free if you've got a spare what 140 minutes and basically you know it is what it is so anyway if you like that please like share and subscribe and i'll see you on the other side god bless terror